what to pick up in a character. In other words, what to really can draw his attention. Now, instead of, let's say, <laughs> if there's a table there, and if there is a book by Balzac on it, and if the book is Cousine Bette, let's say, it's very nice if Dr. Rank, who comes in, who's an educated man, instead of waiting to be told what to do, is as he glances and looks, oh, well, uh, yes, or something. Stanislavski said the character will always pick up or look at something that belongs to him in the circumstances. Now, that's a very good and a big present, isn't it? Yes. That it keeps him busy doing something that is not distracting, but makes him believe in the circumstances. That his ability to say, as he's looking, ah, uh, and listening, oh, they got a new uh, Napoleon plate. Helma is really, really going to make money because <coughs> he's investing in that. Better for him to do that, yes, mm -hmm. than to sit around mm -hmm. and look for the cigarette again, yes, <laughs> the old cigarette. It might be very valuable if uh, on the table, now what I'm saying is that uh, if there's a table and if he was playing chess, it might be very valuable for Dr. Rank or to come over and put the king this place or even think about it. How many people see that the place becomes interesting to you and doable, and not mechanically doable, but doable in a creative way? Yes. Now, I would like when we get to staging one scene, I'd like to see what is doable here in terms of a circumstance. For instance, I know where Nora hides her macaroons. <laughs> yes? I know. She hides them someplace. But I have a feeling that I have picked out where she hides them. Hmm? Because they have to be hidden, and it has to be a secret, and since he spies on her, she really knows where to hide them. These are the interesting things about the circumstances not being stage props or belonging to some foreigner that's backstage somewhere. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, the floor is carpeted, there's a fireplace burning. And what I get from the carpeted is a quality of voice that it isn't strident it has it's softened and what i get from the f from the fire is that there is nothing nothing that has gone on forever and that is christmas in a fireplace that the fact that there's a fire there, the fact is that it's not just an ordinary fire. It's a fire that uh, is going to have pleasure in it. It's, you know, it's burning. It's, it's already getting ready for being a Christmas fire. Hmm? Uh, now, do you, do you see that, that now, these are the social circumstances of the play. I don't want to go into it's a Christmas fire and where she hides that. That's too soon for you. Is that clear? Yeah. But I want you to understand how many people begin to understand that this is a home with thought in it, with responsibility in it, with everything selected for its continuity. Now, did you hear what I said? Everything selected by Mr. Ibsen means that this will continue. Now, th I mean, this home is built on going on. Hmm? All right. Now, the 
then the social situation leads you to a deeper level of thinking. It shows you the way of life. And that must be clear to you. You must not mix up any social situation with your own. It requires from you uh, some study because you have to be stimulated. And once you get stimulated and you can draw from uh, that your imagination is what we need and gets on fire. Now, uh, I told you I think that if the play were written by Neil Simon, I would immediately react to Neil Simon because my, my experience tells me, well, yes, he's a very good playwright. Oh, yes, I'll never miss a play of his because you laugh a lot. I don't get that from Mr. Ibsen. I get, I get, ooh, world literature, big time. And that thing that I get, I feel, well, it is big time and I'll have to do something about that. Uh, now, I'm going to say I, I was really only with the cast and with the description of where they lived, but I think that we penetrated into the class structure and to its continuity. Uh, yes or no? Yeah. Now, I'm going to go on. Uh, this is Christmas. That's what the play tells me. I don't want to go to the lines yet, or the interpretation. I don't want to do what I did last time, because I, I went too fast into experiencing the uh, physical circumstance or any circumstance. I have the tendency to immediately say, look at what Dr. Rank is going to do. I have the tendency to really start using it, but I don't want to do that. I want to stay with the, so that you begin to think not of doing, but of knowing the place, knowing. Now, Christmas in a small provincial town in Norway. a hundred years ago. Uh, and we said that it is eight months a year, uh, snow, ice, and that they were able to make uh, the ability of the when they picked up people to take them to Oslo, or when you took the sled, or what the way in which they went, they were able to make roads in the ice that were needed. So you have that the ice is dealt with in terms of communication. They didn't have railroad, they had a little railroad, but it didn't function at all yet. Uh, so you have that what is the, what I call the physical thing? And the physical thing is, and this I had to look up, I couldn't get it for myself, and I was interested. I like it, I know it makes me act, Jesus, I love it. Uh, it's the most unusual landscape in the world, anywhere. The area is confined, it's very narrow, and the smallness of it means that it twists and it turns so that nothing is, has, any, uh, has any breath in it. Uh, it doesn't give you the sense that on the map that Russia gives you. It's endless that America gives you. It is, it's so confined. And the, so the topography is confined, it's dark, eight months a year is 